Hallo kijkers van Shine's Prize, welkom bij een gloednieuwe aflevering van A Ladies Mystery Journey. En we zijn nog steeds bezig met de case van het stukje film wat gejat is. En we gaan als het goed is nu um, de grote man achter de film spreken, als we hem kunnen vinden. Hmm, no director. Oh, of niet. Ah, but there's Emiliana, Luke. Perhaps you'll uh, know where we can find him. Yes, let's go and ask her. And uh, we can find out... Uh, how her profiling is going at the same time. Oh, still here, pretending to do a, uh, to re do real detective work? Zeg echt een bitch. If I weren't good at pretending, I could pretend to like you. So, how are you go getting on? Hmm, don't be so catty. Uh, no doubt you've hit a brick wall. So you've come to see if you can cl uh, glean anything from me? Not at all. I was just curious to uh, know how your profiling was going. Very well, I'll tell you. Perhaps hearing some genuine deduction will make you realize how unsophisticated your own efforts are. A tasting of cutting edge pro profiling work could do wonders for your future investigations. Well, we can dream, right? You know, this lady always makes me want to scratch. Be quiet, hound. Whoa. Don't interrupt me with your meaningless yapping. Wow, who durfs you? What a foul bitch. So, having spoken to everyone involved, I've built up a detailed profile of the case. The only person who has, uh, was unhappy about the final kiss scene was the editor, Eddie Thor. Uh, in other words, he's the only one with a motive. Uh, he uh, had complained to the director that the stolen scene was inappropriate for the film. However, Thor is an alibi. On the other hand, Seymour Frames, alone in the projection box, had the opportunity to commit the crime, but there's no clean motive. Frames was crazy about his machines, but uh, has little to no inter or no interest in the films he's, uh, he shows using them. Okay. Therefore, he had no reason to commit a crime. The logical conclusion of all of this is that the real culprit is someone else, someone uh, we have yet to investigate. But who could, be the, uh, could that be? The only person with uh, access to the film reels who uh, we have not been investigated. Director Maverick D. Rector. Rector? But why? Rector is a re renowned perfectionist. His attention to detail is well known. How meticulously, uh, meticulous he is about uh, such minute? As the scrape of clouds in the sky or the s uh, sounds of waves? And it would appear uh, that the final kissing in the latest film of his had been troubling him for some time. The perfectionist in him just couldn't decide if the scene was up, for, uh, up to scratch. If it was worthy uh, of inclusion in his magnum opus. He agonized uh, over this right up until the premiere screening today, when finally he made up his mind, the scene had to go. With no time to lose, he cut the scene from the reel and either hit it or disposed of it. All uh, for the sake of a perfect film, uh, that the outcome of my analysis of all available evidence. Hmm. Very interesting. It's nearly a plausible theory, Emiliana. Oh, I wasn't expecting you to accept it so uh, graciously. But something about it just d doesn't sit right with me. What? Do you have a problem with my profiling? It's not exactly a problem, no. It's just something I can't quite put my finger on. Miss Layton's deduction go beyond logic and reason. You see, Emiliana, um, there have been magic all <laughs> on their own. Okay. Ha, magic has no place in case solving Ernest. Uh, Catriel is working on a hunch, nothing more, and hunches are unre unreliable. Well, anyway, I think we should have another chat with Mr. Rector. He was too upset before to, uh, to give us any useful information. Well, that's certainly true, and more information we can gather, the better. Ah, and talk of the devil, mm, that's him over there, isn't it? Ah, oh, yes, and he's with Mr. Thor, it seems. Hmm, it looks like something is going on between the two of them. Eddie, there you are. Do you've got a minute? 
Sure, actually, it's, there's something I need to talk to you about too. But not here. Can't we go somewhere a little more private? How about in the auditorium? It's probably empty now. We should have the place to ourselves. Suits me fine. Did you see that, Mr. Slayton? Um, they disappeared into the auditorium together. Yes, this is an interesting development. We must sneak in there as well. Oh dear, you keep playing your private eye games, Catriel. Some of us still have real work to do. Da 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 da. That's strange. We all saw them come in here. Where have they disappeared to? Over there, cat. Oh, hier hebben we volgens mij nog niet gekeken naar hintmuntjes. And we do be loving some hintmuntjes. Oké. Okay. Oeh, met een puzzel. Oh, vechten? All right, and Eddie, why don't you just admit it? You're uh, you're the only one who uh, who cut that scene. You're the one to cut that scene, aren't you? You've never liked it. You've had a problem with it from the first day of shooting. Yeah, and you knew that, but you refused to cut it yourself. You stubborn old fool. Uh, who's the director here? Hey, me. I am. And uh, if I say a scene stays in, it stays in. Or did I misunderstand the meaning of director somewhere? If you've got a problem uh, with the way I make decisions, then this partnership of ours is over. As of now. It's over, you say? Oh, Mifrit, you've done it now. Please, let's all come down and try to talk about this rationally. Oh. Uh, where did uh, you spring from, Miss Layton? Never mind that now. Just take some deep, breath, deep breaths and calm yourselves down. Breathe in and out. And out some more. And a little bit more. That's it. Ha! Ha! Are you trying to kill me? Of course not. I'm a detective. I much prefer investigating murders to committing them. Anyway, it's clear that you, have, uh, you two have some unresolved issues. Oh, you overheard it, did you? Uh, we were just letting off some steam about the film, that's all. It seems like a little more than that. The end of your partnership together? This know-it-all thinks he is, uh, he's got gift to romance films these days. Uh, but his love scenes have always been a total disaster. It's only my editing that saved them uh, all these years. All these years, okay. Uh, it's thanks to me he produced so many hits. But does he that mean uh, what does that mean to him now? Not a jot. Well, he might have chosen to forget, but mark my words, I haven't forgotten. Oh, Spawned. <laughs> kiss, kiss. The sun is setting on the be at the beach. Uh, the perfect backdrop for a sweet kiss with a girl in the hood. Okay. Use three of the six symbols in the frame on the left. To re represent kiss, okay, uh, in the frame uh, on the right. Slide the symbols to move them, touch them to rotate. You cannot overlap them. Dus gewoon een kusje namaken. Wij zijn ton toe goed. Well, I I didn't think you could solve that one. That had me stuck for decades. 
There's no puzzle that I can't uh, that can't be solved with some calm and considered thinking. Mr. Thor, if you've calmed down for a bit now, perhaps. Calm down? Are you being funny? Uh, I don't care about that spat with Maverick before. I uh, but I can't be pinned for this theft of the final scene. I mean, it's the matter of pride. What sort of editor would do something like that? I say, miss, I don't think this fight is going to sort itself, uh, sort itself out anytime soon. Oh well, never mind. It's rather fun to watch, shall we? Great idea. <laughs> Don't be a snide churl. If we listen in, they might let uh, slip uh, something slip that gives us a lead. Pride, pride. That's more important than you honoring the decisions made by the director. Cutting scenes uh, you were never asked to cut. For the last time, I did not steal that kiss scene, and uh, you know that I would never cut a film unless you gave me a go ahead. Hmm, but it's no secret you didn't like that scene. You always had a problem with it. Come on, admit it. Yeah, I had a problem accepting that a great Maverick director could be happy to uh, uh, to end one of his greatest films with a scene like that. Tsk. Why don't, don't you admit it? You never really got uh, on with that scene either, did you? Yes, I did. I was perfectly happy with it. So you're willing to compromise on, uh, on quality these days? Are you? Uh, you uh, you make me sick, Maverick. But you know what makes me more sick? The fact that someone all uh, other than me cut of your f uh, of your films. All right then, Eddie. If it wasn't you, then who was it? Tell me that. If you ask me, it was you listening to your uh, conscience before I got corrupted by fame. How dare you! Back in the old days, you wouldn't have stopped shooting until a scene you were 100% happy with it. But now, well, those days are gone. Yes, the days when my films made no money. Look, I've changed my directing style. Um, it's for you and the rest of the crew. And we're grateful for that. We, are pre uh, we all appreciate actually getting paid. Don't get me wrong. But does that mean you have uh, to make uh, such huge compromises to the production? Does it mean you can't be true to yourself anymore? Look, I know you said your love scenes were rubbish, but the truth is uh, you um, have shot some good stuff in the past, haven't you? Maybe, but that was a long time uh, ago now. Anyway, Eddie, being too idealistic doesn't pay the bills, does it? That's the bottom line. Fine. If that's your take on it, there's nothing more to say. Goodbye, Maverick. Yikes, that didn't end well, did it? Mr. Thor walked out. This uh, could be our chance to get some important information about Mr. Rector. Come on, Ernest, you and you, Cheryl. Mr. Rector, I'd like to ask you a few uh, more questions if you don't mind. Huh, I'm really not in a mood at the moment, but alright, if it helps to get the whole thing cleared up quicker. That was a rather heated argument which, uh, with you and Mr. Thor uh, just had. Are, you, uh, are such disagreements between uh, the two of you a regular occurrence? Eddie and I have been a team for a very long time, since long before I made it. So uh, we've had more than a few fights over the years, yes. Uh, back in the early days, we used to have blazing rows about production issues. Still, it's never gone this far before. Uh, we've never talked about going our separate ways. Well, yes, well, one ill word, uh, one Ill, Ill word, ask another. Um, as they say, if you said things you didn't mean, I'm sure an apology will go a long way to fixing things. Hmm, with Eddie, I'm not so sure. I hear that you used to make films uh, that were a lot less mainstream, with more fringe appeal, is that right? Huh, that's going back a bit now. Anyway, it wasn't like I was trying to shoot a fringe, a fringe films, that's just how it worked out. That's how people took my material, it wasn't for everyone. But Eddie really liked my old work, and now that I'm making films f uh, more people actually want to watch, he's not happy about it. Uh, you know. He was always pressing me not to include that last scene of No Sub For Love, right from the start. 
Yes, he told me. He said he didn't believe it was the true. Uh, it was true to your style. Not true to my style, huh? That makes it all sound so simple. The truth is, I don't even know what my style is anymore. Uh, it's just typical of Eddie, though. Uh, he never had any hesitation in telling me what was wrong uh, with my films. Uh, sometimes it makes me so mad, but I have to admit it. He's usually right. Oh, who am I kidding? Um, He's right this time too. You mean about the stolen scene? Uh, I just wanted to be real. I wanted to shoot a kiss uh, that uh, looked like was generally from the heart. Not just two actors playing their parts. But somehow I couldn't get it right. In the old days I wouldn't have given up. But uh, I would have kept shooting and shooting until I got uh, the result I wanted. Why didn't you do that the first time then? You're young. You uh, wouldn't expect... Uh, I wouldn't expect you to understand. The fact is, as you get older, you lose that drive you had in, the, in your youth. No, you're quite right. That's something I can relate to. It, it sounds uh, rather sad, to be honest. So you're telling us that Mr. Thor couldn't accept the scene you shot? Uh, that he cut it from the film without your permission? Yes, that's his job. After all, cutting film. Uh, and he's very good at it. Uh, I can't really say I blame him, that's all my fault. This might seem like a strange request after everything that's happened, Miss Layton, but could you try to keep this quiet? Eddie did it for uh, my benefit at the end of the day. I'm afraid that, would, that, that won't be possible. What? But if this comes out, Eddie's career is over. It's really worth destroying the man just for some sense of obligation to uphold justice? That's not a reason at all. It's because Mr. Thor didn't do it. Just see, the fact is, you are his alibi, Mr. Rector. Exactly, you and Mr. Thor were together at all times until the start of the screening, weren't you? And when you checked the film um, reels together, you found no problems. So if Mr. Thor was never out of your sight after that time, then however much he disagreed with the inclusion of that scene, he had no opportunity to cut it. Hmm, I suppose that's true. So someone else stole it then. Well, that's wonderful. Miss Layton? Good, it looks like um, I have all the evidence I need now. Case complete. I am curious, but I think I already know what I had already said. Of course, yes, it all makes sense now. Yeah, I'm deaf now. Miss Layton, have you solved it? Yes, Ernest, I believe I have. I j just as every film has the final scene, every case has a truce to, um, to glean. And now I've uncovered both. Oh, well done, Miss Layton. Brava! And what's, uh, what a spiffing first that was. Ernest, someone the suspects. Gladly, Miss, gladly. Thank you for all for coming everyone. I have finally asserted the truth about the stolen kiss scene. Really? You have? Who did it? Come on, spill the beans. I want to know who did this to me and why. And how, that's what I want to know. Uh, when was it cut from the reel? Tell us, Miss Detective. Put, uh, put us all of our misery, please. Momento, Catriel, why have you asked so many people here? It's clearly obvious that most of them couldn't possibly have been involved. Oh, it's much more fun this way. The more people, the more tension. Ha <laughs> ha I agree, I agree with Miss Layton. She's a born performer, that woman. Oh, this is so exciting. I couldn't miss a show like this. I, I mean, um, as mayor. I have vested interest in the truth. As the head of the Seven Dragons, I feel obligated to see what this case uh, throw, 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 throw to this conclusion. Okay. I don't, don't need me, don't need me, mine at all, mine at all. And I really don't care what happened to that scene, uh, can I just go? Come, come along, Miss Layton, we're all dying to hear the truth about this case, and who's the culprit? 
let's not rush. This detective's moment of, moment of glory after all. True, if this were a film, I would be having a good suspense track running in the background and uh, really draw it uh, out to build up tension. Exactly, now let's get to the case. This was an extremely strange affair from the outset. A final scene strolling for a film for a very uh, day of the debut, debut screening. So what could be the truth behind it? No doubt, uh, you all have your own theories, theories and ideas. But I'm not exaggerating when I tell um, you that the real truth will make even the most outlandish theory, theory of yours seem tame. Because you see, the truth is always stranger than fiction. Alright, alright. Uh, you couldn't let me milk it, couldn't you? If I had to identify one culprit in this case, <gasps> it would be you over there. Yes. were being switched during the screening, you did a major minor poo on the film. A poo? And his poo hit the all-important kiss scene. <laughs> Is that it? But surely a little bit of bird poo could easily be wiped off the film. Would everyone please stop saying poo? Indeed it could, Mayor Loanida. Which is where the second guilty party in this escapade comes in. You, Mr. Seymour Frames. <laughs> All the equipment here has just recently been upgraded. Mr. Frames cares for his projection machinery so deeply, he couldn't bear the thought of running a soiled film through it, even if the excrement had been wiped off. So he cut the infected scene out of the reel altogether. So it's his doing then? Yes, but with the Major resolutely denying everything, it's going to be hard to make it stick. Oh, poo. Where did that kiss scene come from? Apparently, Mr. Rector. He cut in an old scene of his own to replace the missing one. It's a clip of himself kissing his lover, shot a long time ago when he was still just starting out as a cameraman. Foxy. Secretly, it was supposed to be a film about his own love affair. So, the clothes and everything match the style of the other scenes perfectly. That's how he integrated it so seamlessly. You've got to hand it to the old dog. It's a very moving scene. Yes, because it's full of genuine emotion. They weren't acting. It was true love. <sighs> if only someone would give me a kiss like that. Just imagine. What? Oi, oi, pinstripes. What are you imagining? N nothing. I, I was just... Just what? Um, Spit it out. No, uh, I... Uh, what, you <laughs> dirty mongrel? A naval advance, no sub for love, was a hit at the box office with passionate uh, final kiss scene. And now Maverick D. Rector is currently working on a new albeit uh, not to mainstream blockbuster. Oh, respondent. How is it you always stumble on the arts in these cases? Stumble on? It sounds like you think it's just luck, show. Well, isn't it? Not at all. The truth is, Miss Lathan makes logical but instinctive inferences. <laughs> uh, 
Bedankt voor het kijken van deze aflevering. Vond je het een leuke aflevering? Doe een duimpje omhoog. We gaan de volgende aflevering Case 4 completen. Bedankt voor het kijken. Adios. Amigos.